Yeah, uh, my name is Joe Leska, ex-professional footballer, uh, currently on the VSI Sporting Directorship course um, and also currently working at Man City, part of the loan development team, helping the younger generation of players develop into, into professionals. Great stuff. Well, Joe, thank you for uh, taking the time to speak to me today. Um, we'll just go straight into, obviously, the Sporting Director programme. You've been on it for a few weeks now. Why? Or what drove you to always wanting to study it? Yeah, well, obviously, the initial draw was me wanting to go into football administration. Um, I see more longevity in that in that career path than actually coaching on the grass. Um, obviously, knowing Tony, um, be as it may, like small uh, from his from his background at Man City, and and known people that have been on the course, they recommended it to me, and have been met up with him and seeing how impressive it was and what I could potentially learn and that was the kind of draw for me. And how do you see the program benefiting you and your career going forward? What do you want to learn, hope to learn and how do you want to kind of utilise that knowledge? Um, I think the biggest thing at the moment is probably the networking. Um, having a course just started, um, I'm sure I'll, I'll gain a lot more knowledge and experience as the time passes. But initially, obviously, meeting new people from different backgrounds and sporting industries and industries in general is key to, to open having an open mind in, into what you, you're getting yourself into in regards to working with different cultures and, and uh, personalities. So it's just being having an open mind at the moment in, into what the job role can bring. You mentioned there about meeting people from other sports, other backgrounds. How important is that to, to be able to network at such a senior level within sports? Obviously, go on and, as you say, want to work in senior executive roles within the industry. Yeah, I, I think everyone that I've spoken to said how important the network aspect of, of any job is, really. Um, and I obviously, I, I realise that. But for me personally, it's more the variation of personalities. Um, being able to kind of recognise good and bad traits in individuals uh, on the course, you know, in a workplace environment, and just being able to kind of see where and how we could work together. And also, you mentioned people from different sports, different parts of of industries in in general, as media or finance, um, professional athletes. How important is that to learn from other sports and pick up? transferable skills um, to go forward on your own career path? Yeah, obviously it's key to kind of recognise what principles are relatable in team sports. Um, obviously there's going to be individual sportsmen and women that obviously have traits that you could look at and, and try and implement in, in your kind of environment. But across different sports, through rugby, uh, especially that obviously looking at their kind of core principles, they have a, a kind of a longer history in regards to what they deem as a culture. Uh, it's still relatively new and harder, probably harder to implement in, into a football environment. So it's recognising how they do that and, and how and what's beneficial in, in the footballing industry. I know also you've been, only been on the programme a few weeks now, but has there been anything in particular, which you, a lesson or a guest speaker, which you've, really zoned in on I've, I've got something from that there's been a, a few to be honest um damien hughes um mike today again the very impressive people very successful people i'm i'm always impressed by by people that have, have dedicated years uh, and periods of their life to their craft and and obviously reaping the rewards for that so I, i've been impressed by them all but they will be the two that have stood out for me what particular skills do you think make, say, successful sports executive at, at any level? I mean, obviously, with your, your playing career behind you as well, the people you met in that time, um, did you pick up anything from that which you thought was a the right way of doing things? I'm hoping to learn what it takes. Um, it's different when it's obviously um, it's more attributes based coming from a playing background. Um, obviously, there's a level of intelligence you need to understand information and process that. But in regards to going football into going forward, sorry, into the administrative roles, um, I'm just trying to learn as much as possible to be able to recognise them things. Um, a, a question that is posed to me 
uh, numerous times is what have you learned from previous managers and coaches and what would you take forward it's not necessarily what I've learned it's it's what I've learned how the group reacts to that because I've worked with successful coaches that the group didn't enjoy working in and unsuccessful un, or deemed unsuccessful coaches that it was a joy to work for so I'm just trying to recognize what them things were um, and obviously try and eradicate the, the bad uh, and keep the good things. You obviously mentioned there about previous managers you played under. Was there a, maybe a particular example you could give us of, a, of one of your managers and something they've done which you thought was a very positive attribute um, in their armour? Um, the positive, I, I think the managers that were, were selfless, um, that geared and wanted the best for the team and their decision processes and decision making was geared around and that and rather than well what do what's easier for me um i have I've worked with managers that their schedule was based around their travel arrangements their food the food in hotels was based around what they like um and again it was just being able to recognize is that the right decision or is it the right decision for them and for the group and again more often than not the managers um that you enjoy to work for you recognize that their sole purpose was to develop you as an individual and get the best for the team. And I mean, at what point in your playing career did you start thinking about life kind of post football? Uh, did you know that you wanted to do something like a BSI program? Um, and what you wanted to achieve was it kind of since you stopped playing that you've had the, the time to, to think about that? Um, definitely more so since I've stopped playing. But um, the last couple of years of my career, I, I, I started to think about what route I wanted to take, um, having still friends and colleagues at Man City and being able to kind of bounce ideas off them. That, that's helped. Um, but I wasn't kind of definitive in, in what I wanted to do. Um, I, I, I kind of realised I wasn't going to go into coaching straight away. I think the time that consumes, I wasn't ready to give up that amount of time again to something I wasn't going to enjoy as much as playing. So um, I needed that period of being able to do various things. And that was some of the best advice I got from a, from a man I respect highly. Um, he said, kind of do as much as you can in various different industries to, to see what draws you in most. And um, having worked with the loans team and, and recognizing how key the role is to an individual's development. Um, it just kind of created a buzz that I know I'm passionate about and, and want to succeed in. And I suppose ultimately then for an individual, obviously you will maybe work harder or, or try harder, certainly enjoy it more if it's something you're, you're interested in or passionate about. Yeah, I think that's anything. I think the, the more engaged you are uh, with passion, um, it just gets the best at yourself and the people that you're working with and for get the best out of you and the best results. And I'm able to recognise that. Um, and again, fortunate enough to do something I loved, which which I found easy because you love it. Um, am I going to say this is going to be equally as enjoyable? Probably not because playing was everything for me. But um, going forward, I know I am passionate about potentially making a difference to, to generations of, of younger players. And talking of younger players there, uh, from what you saw in the game, maybe what's available now, are there mechanisms in place for youngsters um, to know maybe what's available to them post-playing, like a VSI programme, for example, or other, ed other educational opportunities? Or is it kind of a case of football, football, football? No, I think there's always been opportunities. It's just whether, I just think now they're deemed not as a distraction. Um, I think in previous years, if you... If it wasn't golf, it was a distraction. Um, but now I think that players, um, you, you're allowed to educate yourself and develop yourself in whatever way you seem fit, as long as it, it mirrors up with, with the plane, which is right. I, again, if I'm a sole believer of whatever your motivation is, use it to kind of get the best out of yourself. And if it means taking yourself away and, and playing two rounds of golf a week or if it means getting yourself and your head down into some books and, and developing your skills in, in other areas then, then so be it. and I've seen it work well for both on both sides so there's no there's no one way there's no right or wrong way it's just as long as you're able to kind of give the maximum effort to play um, there's, there's no excuse not to develop yourself along the journey.
Is this something which clubs encourage? I mean, getting their players out there to do things like front football? Um, yes and no. There's, there's, there's some clubs, and I, I don't think it's a necessarily a club thing, whether they encourage it or not. I think it's individuals in, within them clubs. Um, and, and that's not just the football industry. I've, I've came across it in, in various different fields that if the individual is more secure about their role, and, and, and what they abilities they have, they're more inclined to encourage and help you go forward where I felt and came across individuals that are probably less secure um, and not, not fear, but a question why you want to do other things and pursue other avenues. And that's the thing I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to develop is to, to get an understanding of, of why someone would want any individual to, to not be better and, and not help group of people and just my, my final question um for you Jerry, and obviously as a player you reach the top of the game you're now aspiring to reach the top of the game as an executive um for people watching this and looking at joining a program like this so what does it take to 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 get to the top um in an industry like football or sport uh, dedication is key um there's a lot of luck in regards to timing um but if you're prepared when the opportunity arrives, then it's not necessarily luck. Um, there's a lot of effort that you have to to give. Um, and people talk about sacrifices and I never really deemed them as sacrifices because I enjoyed what I did so much. It, there were just choices I made not to do certain things, not to to say, kind of take part in, in things my friends were doing at such a young age. And it wasn't, I wasn't missing out. I just didn't want to do it because I knew the outcome was, was going to benefit me in the long haul and I think that's key in, in any walk of life if you if you want to be successful you have to work hard and apply yourself and um, and, and also obviously just give 100% in, in whatever you do really That's great Jerry thank you so much for um, speaking today No problem thank you